Hello, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm a Managing Director at Rust360. I uh, now help oversee the ISO 27001 practice. And this video series is aimed at helping individuals understand ISO 27001 on a control by control basis. So in this video, we're going to cover uh, the first set of controls, which is clauses A.51, which is around information security policies. So you'll see on my screen here, I have uh, two sets of documents up. So on the left-hand side here, I have ISO 27001, the official standard, where you can see in Annex A, there are the controls listed out here in table format. And then on the right side of my screen, I have ISO 27002, which is the detailed implementation guidance of every control in ISO 27001. And I'm going to walk you through some of these here. So uh, Annex 5.1 is around policy, and policy is broken up into two requirements. Um, they ask that you have a policy, so it'll just say, do you have an information security policy? And then is that policy reviewed on a periodic basis? And if you look over here in the implementation guidance, it'll define some of those expectations for a policy, uh, at least loosely define them. And I also have an example of what that policy could look like, just for some best practices. So this is an example policy that you see here on the right. So having the policy, what we recommend if your risk 360 client is to base that policy on ISO 27001. So if you look at this, you'll see that we cover every element in ISO 27001. I've also seen organizations that will do that based on other frameworks like NIST or CIS Top 20 or whatever makes sense for your organization. We chose ISO because we're talking about ISO here. So if you cover off on all of those topics line by line, it's a pretty laborious effort. Um, but that will get you covered generally from an audit perspective and building out a good security program. If you're a Risk360 uh, client, we'll ha we have this as a template and we'll also customize the experience for you to make sure that we build out a policy that is customized for your organization. So that'll generally fulfill the requirement for 5.1.1, do you have a policy? The second part of that is do you review a policy on a periodic basis? So you want to refresh that policy at least annually. That is the standard. So the easiest way to evidence that if you're an auditor, uh, if you're working with an auditor is to have a change log right at the front of the policy and just denote any time that there's a change. And your auditor is typically, typically going to look to see that that's happened at least annually, but really you should get in the habit of doing that whenever there's a major change. If you don't like the idea of having a change log in your policy itself, there's tools out there that you can leverage to accomplish the same mission. So we've seen clients use something like uh, Google Drive, and there's a change log within that, or something like OneDrive if you're a Microsoft user, and there's a change log that systematically keeps it up there. But as a best practice, I think just throwing a change log right in the policy is the way to go. So anyone who accesses that policy can see when the, the major changes happen and who was responsible for that change. So again, that's clause or uh, Annex 5. Do you have a policy? Is the policy reviewed? The trick to that is really putting together a really good policy, um, and I recommend doing it based on uh, the Annex controls like we showed in this uh, table of contents here. If you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to our team at Rust360, and we'd be happy to help.